Britain's new visa regime awaits nation's planning to visit Britain from early next year. It won't be as simple as packing your bags, boarding your flight to London and breezing through immigration. If the visa regime is imposed, all Malaysian travellers will have their fingerprints checked and their identities ascertained. Malaysia is among 11 non-European nations subjected to a British visa waiver test last year. The results showed a strong case for introducing the visa regime. All because there were Malaysians who chose to stay past their six-month visa-free period to work illegally in the UK. In July, the British government gave Malaysia a six-month window period to comply and make the necessary improvements to nip the visa abuse problem in the bud. British High Commissioner to Malaysia Boyd McCleary explains in detail about the government's perspective of the problem and what it would take for Malaysia to stay in Britain's exclusive visa exam list. Very good afternoon. My name is Paul Gabriel and my guest today is the High Commissioner of the United Kingdom to Malaysia, Boyd McCleary. Hi Commissioner, it's lovely to see you. Nice to see you again. Could you please explain to us uh, the, the United Kingdom's need for a visa regime to include Malaysia? Uh, I know there's been a certain amount of negative publicity around this, uh, the possibility of a change in the visa arrangements, but I think the most important thing to say is that we very much welcome Malaysians to the UK. Uh, we have uh, been receiving Malaysian visitors for many, many years. Uh, about 100,000 Malaysians visit uh, Britain each year, and that number is rising, and we are delighted to, uh, to welcome Malaysians as visitors, as as guests of, of uh, fellow Malaysians in the UK, as students and uh, uh, a, a, those who, who, who have uh, opportunities for employment in the UK. So we are a welcoming country as far as Malaysia is concerned. That's the first thing to say and I think that's somehow occasionally is, is forgotten. Uh, we have large numbers of Malaysians come and most of them have no difficulty at all and most of them uh, behave entirely appropriately and uh, we uh, appreciate that. Um, but there are uh, some Malaysians uh, who come to the UK who do need a visa and, and if you're going to the UK for more than six months uh, you have for many years required a visa and the, the sort of people that uh, fall into that category are people going to study for an extended period and those who are going to work for an extended period. That's, that's the normal reason for uh, securing a visa and we provide an extremely efficient service normally and I'll, we'll talk a bit about what's been happening this year if, if you like. Uh, but normally we have a, a very efficient and effective service in delivering visas to those who need them, um, provided people have their paperwork in order, provided they can demonstrate that they have finances in place, uh, and provided if they're a student they have an offer of a place at a university which is recognised by our authorities. Uh, we uh, are very uh, pleased to be able to provide what we think is a, is a good service, and more than 98% of all students, for example, who apply for a visa to go to the UK, receive that visa and usually in, in good order. So we think we have a, an efficient service. Um, then uh, there are, however, a few Malaysians who abuse the system. We, we, as I say, we have open arms. We want to have Malaysians come to the UK, but there are some people who have abused the system. And over the last few months, we've been doing a more systematic uh, examination of Malaysians, not just Malaysians, actually all countries outside the European economic area to see what the nature of that abuse might be. This is a, a decision that was taken by our minister some time ago. Immigration, as you probably know, in the UK is a very high priority. It's a, it's a high public profile issue, just as it is in Malaysia. If you think about the Sabahans, if you think about uh, the recent articles in the paper about uh, people from Ajay who have overstayed and so on, there, it's, it's, it tends to be quite a political issue. Um, and it is in the UK too. So our ministers decided that they would do a review of policy across the board and Malaysia was one of the countries which was looked at. And when we started looking closely at the, the nature of Malaysian uh, coming to the UK, we did find that there was quite a lot of what we call abuse. Uh, quite large numbers of Malaysians were actually arriving at UK ports and being turned away because we weren't satisfied that they were just ordinary casual visitors. Uh, our immigration officer concluded that they were planning to work or, or stay for longer periods than, than, than declared. So that one, was one indicator. A second indicator was that um, we were finding, picking up Malaysians who had overstayed uh, their visa, either had entered on a, on a, uh, without a visa, uh, as a tourist, as a visitor, or had come in on a, uh, say, a student visa or a work visa and had overstayed their time. They're, they're called overstayers. 
And again, there were quite large numbers of overstayers. And, and we put this together, we, had, we realized that Malaysia was actually a matter of quite considerable concern to the UK. And we thought that it was appropriate to move on to a further stage, um, which is stage three of a test. We call it the visa waiver test. There was, there was stage one, which was gathering information, and stage two was actually looking to examine and, and uh, analyze that information. Stage three is, is deciding to do something about it for a certain number of countries. And Malaysia is one of 12 countries which was identified for stage three. Um, and I can explain what stage three uh, is about, if you like. Uh, I understand you were posted here in July 2006. Yes, I was. Did you see this coming when you, were, when you came here, that uh, this is going to be the case? No, I don't think I did. It wasn't something that was on our radar at that stage. Um, uh, I, uh, uh, I, wasn't, I was aware that there were, there were issues around overstaying. I was aware that we had uh, some concerns uh, about Malaysians, but at that stage we hadn't properly documented uh, the matter and we hadn't really investigated what the nature uh, of the, the problem was. It was only last year that we started doing that more effectively and we still have more work to do and, and part of our um, uh, ambition for the next few months is actually to do a, a detailed analysis to try and understand more fully than we do at present uh, what the nature of the problem is. We're actually going to go out into uh, various parts of Malaysia, look at what's happening, why people are getting advice to go to the UK when they are obviously not intending just to, to visit, but they're actually intending to, to work uh, inappropriately. Uh, what travel agents are doing. We have evidence that there are people facilitating travel and we want to get to the bottom of that and, and tackle those issues at, at, at the roots. So that instead of coming to the UK and being turned away uh, or coming to the UK and overstaying, they actually don't go to the UK in the first place because we don't accept that those are legitimate um, uh, travellers, legitimate visitors to the UK. So we're trying to understand more clearly than we do what the nature of the problem is and then that will help us to tackle the problem more effectively. Um, so that's part of an ongoing process. But no, I, I think you're, it, it's fair comment that um, two years ago we hadn't seen this coming. There was a steady upward trend, uh, review of the, uh, of, the, of the figures, and um, <coughs> then there was formal notice given to the Malaysian government in July of this year that uh, Malaysia was a country of concern. So that was in July. Stage three of the, of the test of the process started in July, and we told the Malaysian government that there would be a six-month period during which we would... Um, uh, want to work with them to understand better what the nature of the problem was and to reduce the risk of overstaying, of abuse of the system. And I must say that the response from the Malaysian government was very positive, very constructive. Uh, uh, there was an immediate acknowledgement that the, this problem did exist. Uh, it may not be uh, uh, you know, widespread. And, uh, there are not huge numbers of Malaysians overstaying, but they're sufficient to be a matter of concern to us. And I, give you, I can give you some figures later on. Uh, so the, the Malaysian authorities recognized that there were legitimate concerns, uh, and they immediately uh, agreed to work with us to develop, for example, a, a memorandum of understanding uh, so that we could work more closely together to exchange information. They uh, dis agreed to work with us to uh, look, for example, at the visas and arrival issue here in Malaysia, which was of some concern to us. They look, they're looking to work with us uh, uh, to manage uh, the security arrangements at the airport. KLIA is an airport where most, many of the, uh, the people coming to the UK pass through. And, and we've identified, for example, that people are going through KLIA to come to the UK who started off in places like South Africa or the Caribbean. Well, why would you do that if there, was some, there wasn't some sort of problem, some weakness at, um, uh, here in Malaysia? Uh, so, so we're working with the Malaysian authorities to address these issues and um, we have six months in which to do that and, and then we will review the situation at the end of the six month period and decide whether we think that the uh, level of collaboration has been good, whether the um, risks are reduced sufficiently for us to remove uh, militia from our, what's been described here in the press as our, as our watch list. And if we are satisfied that all is well, then a uh, decision will be taken not to impose a visa regime. If we remain concerned, if we think that the risks are the same or greater, then uh, we would uh, Sorry, we would, we would impose a re regime. We don't want to take that step. It's not a step that we would take lightly. It's not a step we would take uh, uh, with any great enthusiasm. But uh, this is an issue of concern to the UK public, to British ministers, and we have to take it seriously. Hey, Malata Subramanian, the Star Malaysia.